Right, well, I've been thinking of finding myself an outlet for my book and movie rants for a while now. And what finally pushed me over the edge was the Wheel of Time Amazon series. I was a huge fan of the books as a teenager. I read and reread them quite a lot and spent a lot of my teenage years in fantasy forums and the like. So it's a story I care about and I tried really hard not to get hyped up. I tried not to get too excited in advance and unfortunately what you're left with when you take out the hype is just worries. I think today it's almost impossible to avoid the comparison with Game of Thrones and I'm not sure how that's going to affect both the production and the viewers. The issue is they are very different in terms of source material and I just hope that in order to strive for the same success of the Game of Thrones, they don't compromise too much with the spirit of the Wheel of Time's books themselves. Another thing is just the material. It's a lot. There are 15 books and they're big ones and the cast of characters is huge, so I'm not sure how they're going to handle that in the series, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. Another thing I worry about is how certain social issues we face are going to relate to the material of the Wheel of Time, for example, the place of women in the world. In the Wheel of Time, women are generally a very bossy, badass bunch, and in the context, in consideration of the history of the world, it's not exactly unreasonable. Humanity at that point has had to live a thousand years knowing that the world was almost destroyed by men who lost their minds and unleashed devastation all around them. And it can still happen to any man at any point to go crazy and cause destruction. So it's not exactly surprising that women evolved in a way which made them proud in their own rational thought, in their own ability to know better and somehow grew also a little bit distrustful of men and keen not to leave them to their own devices. So. I'm wondering how they're going to handle that because in the context of the book it can be understood. I'm not sure how much of that context would be involved in the Amazon series and if it will provide the justification for the characters as they are. Also, from the trailer, I got the impression that the style of the Aes Sedai is kind of military and uniform. And it reminded me of the Grisha of Shadow and Bone, who, despite living and training in a castle, they are trained and intended for military combat, while that's not the case for most of the Aes Sedai. They can be political or scholarly or anything else, really. And I hope the nuances between them don't get lost. I hope we are not left with just an overall impression that, yeah, women are badass without any pronounced differences between them. And since Matt is one of my favorite characters from the books, I worry why they recast him and if that's going to go well. And now that the first episodes are out, first impressions. I think maybe if the series is viewed by people who haven't read the books or who have read them a long time ago, not long enough to remember details, or have read them and thought, well, this could be darker and more heart-wrenching, then 
for them it would be more universally appealing. For me it's a bit distracting because I notice all the differences, all the changes that have been made and I am not exactly sure why some of them are as they are. Some of them I can totally see why. I think they might enhance certain messages or just make it easier to translate certain aspects of the story from the book to the screen. For some of the changes I'm not sure there's an exact justification and I'm not sure how it's going to develop in the future episodes. But it's important to say, uh, when I say it's distracting me, I don't mean it entirely as something negative. It only means that I'll need a couple of rewatches in order to be able to fully appreciate the Amazon series and not continually think of the differences between the books and the Amazon series in order to try to figure out where it's going. A lot of my issues with the changes, they don't have to do with some kind of devotion I maintain for uh, the canon and the books. It's more like changing the spirit or the role of a certain character or uh, big changes in what I suspect would be their development. But on the whole, the cast is amazing and is beautifully shot and I think it might turn out very nice. And now with spoilers for people who know the story or don't mind knowing about it. I think unfortunately I was right about the sort of military style of the Aes Sedai. Of course, I don't mean cargo pants and the like, but the ladylike appearance from the books has been changed to something more practical, uh, either long coats over breeches or split skirts or something like that. That's the general direction in which the costumes have evolved. I think maybe some of it is due to practicality and how the scenes have to be shot, but I think maybe it will take away from the differences between certain characters, make them stand out less or in a different way. Don't get me wrong, my the issue with style is not purely aesthetical. I don't mean this in the sense that I see fantasy, I want to see a Disney princess. I'm saying this because for many characters, I think what they wear and how what they wear evolves in the future books and subsequently probably will evolve in the Amazon series is part of their growth as characters or is part of something they find very important for them. Like take Nynaeve, uh, for her at the beginning it's very important to maintain wearing the two rivers clothes, the two river wools, which I've always imagined them a bit like the skirt Egwene is wearing at the scene at the mountain top, which by the way is amazing, very beautiful scene, I loved it. Uh, except I don't. I imagine them a bit more traditional without the trousers. Anyway, that's just in my head. But the point is, Nynaeve sticks to this in order to maintain her own, and it's part of her of the contrast between her and Moraine. And let's take Lan and his Hador. It's part of his heritage and something extremely important to him. And take Rand and the way he starts to dress later on to ch express the changes in the person he's become. And Perrin and his cho weapon of choice during the books. I just think that clothes are important to show the differences between the characters and the way they see themselves, the choices they make for themselves. That's how some of the characters are distinguished. 
like Min, who is uh, one of the first women we see wearing trousers and that makes her stand out, makes her noticeable. Or Avienda, who at first dislikes dresses and suddenly grows into them. And the way Nynaeve warms to the idea of wearing silks instead of wools. And it's all part of, of the character development and of the way they see each other and see themselves. And I'm hoping some of that remains, at least. One thing I'm not sure why it was changed is adding the possibility of the Dragon Reborn being a girl. I don't think it was exactly necessary to place any further importance on female characters. And I think in the books it was very important to stick to the certain wording of the prophecies regarding the dragon. So I'm not really sure if it's going to matter that they've left this door open for the dragon being a woman as well. It's just an odd decision. I don't think uh, the, the female side of the story needed further boost or anything like that. But we'll see how that goes. And also I'm not sure why they needed to make a woman the fourth Tavirin. I think the female characters already involved have their own power and significance and they don't necessarily need the further boost of being Tavirin. But again, maybe they've had something in mind. Another thing that ticked me off but the Red Adger usually ticks me off, is how Leandrin talked to Loghain. And uh, she talked to him about the One Power and how it's not meant for men and him touching it is making it filthy, which is different from the way things stand in the books. Uh, in the books, the One Power has a female and a male part. It's intended to be accessible for both genders. And the taint doesn't come from men touching something that's not intended for them. The taint has come from an outside source. So, I am not sure why that distinction was made and if it will change anything. It could be just the Red Aja prejudice. We'll see. Maybe the most understandable change I've seen is in Perrin's case. He is married and he kills accidentally his wife during the Trolloc attack. I think maybe this is done because setting up his fear of his own strength in the books it's done through observation of other characters or in the internal monologue he has but maybe for the series it was better to have a more dramatic and obviously traumatic uh, way to to show this and to communicate why he is afraid of who he is and his own strength and how easy it would be for him to hurt anyone. For Perrin's side of the story, I think maybe it does him a little bit of a disservice both to him and his wife, uh, the way it's changed in the series because it externalizes a lot of his motivation and the way he's shaped as a person and she is mainly a plot device to motivate him, not a fully-fledged character at all. I think maybe Matt's family issues is something I'm not entirely on board with. And the whole... his whole character being more troubled in the beginning of the series. I think it takes away from something that happens later. 
because when we see him in the books, he is maybe childish, maybe mischievous, but he's not weighed down with poverty or issues with his family. He is a troublemaker, but in terms of let's cut the line of the laundry and catch a badger and scare the girls with it. But then it does set him up as a kind of rising above his circumstances in a way he cares for his sisters. I don't mind Matt's new story in itself. I think it's a bit of a cliche that the rogue one, the troublemaker, would come from a troubled family and so on. I think it my main issue with it is that it changes a lot his motivation and his attitude and the role he plays in the overall uh, setting, in the overall, in the trio and in the cast. In the books he is the more light-hearted one, the reckless one, the adventurous one. Perrin is very home-oriented, he really wants to go home. Rand also often reminisces. Matt is the one who doesn't mind seeing the world. He is the one who embraces the adventure and seeing the new places. In this new storyline, it would be different to imagine him in this way because he his main attachment to his home is his care for his sisters and it's beautifully portrayed in the first episode. I think it would maybe do him a bit of a disservice later on because we'd see him motivated strongly to take care of his sisters and then and then what? He can't be the same Matt who is from the books. He can't be the reckless adventurer. Another thing I'm not sure about is Nynaeve and her old wisdom being convinced that the White Tower would turn down women of inferior circumstances. In the books, it's very hard for a woman who can channel to hide from the White Tower because the Aes Sedai make a point of discovering every girl who can channel because the Aes Sedai numbers are dwindling and it's important to find everyone who can be a part of them. So in that sense, it's a bit unrealistic to me and not exactly true to the story that the White Tower would turn down anyone with the potential to be a S today. Another thing I'm not sure why it was changed or if even it has changed, it has to do with the way as they hold their hands. It's very pronounced in Moraine and the way her hands are always held close to her. And also the as they who was captured by the white cloaks had her hands cut and it seemed to me like she was subdued fairly easily. It implied to me that maybe in the series they will make it make channeling connected to, to using your hands. I'm not sure that's the case. It hasn't been established yet, but it's something that caught my attention. I'm not too sure about the Wild Wild West vibes regarding Tom. I think on the whole series, the series is trying to be maybe a bit a bit darker and more dramatic than the book series. So maybe that's why, but to me it's very literal and very obvious in terms of soundtrack, in terms of the way the scenes involving uh, Tom I executed, it just looks 
a lot like a spaghetti western to me <laughs> and I never pictured him that way but maybe that's just me as I said at first what strikes me more uh, on first watching it is the changes that have been made because they distract me from fully appreciating the series itself so I'll very likely have a bit more to say when I watch the second reflector but for now that's all